Okay, I'm assembling the rear cover. This is the rear cover for a GL1100. I've put a new seal in here for the output shaft. I've put a new seal in for the pulse generator shaft, which comes through that hole. And uh, I'm now putting in a new bearing for the pulse generator shaft. The output shaft bearing was good. I had it out, I cleaned it, oiled it, put it back in. The um, shaft for the, the bearing for the pulse generator shaft is fully completely seized up. You, it won't turn at all. So I bought a new bearing. It's an SKF uh, 6002. Yeah, 6002. Uh, the one I bought has rubber seals. The original bearing was completely open on both sides. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to remove the rubber seal from the side facing the engine. Okay, there's the rubber seal, which was damaged in taking it out. And now here's the bearing. Okay. So uh, it's got grease in it right now, supposedly permanently greased from the factory, but uh, it's going to be running in oil, so I'm just going to add a little oil to it. Now I'm going to leave the other seal in, and that's going to face outside the engine. So there's already a seal in the, in the case, so this is going to be double sealed. So it'll still get plenty of oil from the engine. And... Uh, we have pretty good insurance that it's not going to leak with the uh, both the grease seal on the bearing and then the oil seal in the in the case. get this situated so it's laying flat on the block like so set another block there so this bearing is a light press fit so I'm going to uh, just tap it in gently with a punch and a hammer once I get it started When you're tapping a bearing in, you don't want to use brute force, gentle taps on the outer race only. I'm not hitting the inner race at all. Work my way around the bearing, keep it going in straight, little by little. You can tell by the sound that it's about bottomed out, it probably is. Yeah. Okay. It's bottomed out and it's now flush with the inside of the case, turns freely, the seal is in its correct location. Okay, so that's that. The next step to assembling this rear cover is to put the stator in it. This is the stator. Um, for any of you that don't know, I'm going to just show you quickly how to test the stator with an ohm meter. There's my own meter. Now, 
there should be very low resistance through these coils. I believe it's down in the neighborhood of a half an ohm. There's uh, 0.3 ohms, wire to wire. Going the other way, it should be the same. 0.3, and then we're going to test it the third way. So, can you see what I'm doing here? I hope. Yeah, I'm going line to line on those stator coils, and I'm getting 0.3 ohms all three ways. There's obviously three ways you can test three wires. Now, 0.3 ohms. So now we also have to test to ground to make sure there's not a short circuit. Okay. The first test is testing for basically an open coil. If there's an open coil, of course, the whole unit is bad. Now, when we go to, uh, when we go to the frame of the coil, this is what's getting actually bolted into place in the housing. And now I'm going wire to ground and it's open. You guys, you can see OL on the, on the ohm meter means it's an open circuit. Okay, no continuity. And that's how you test it. So once you've done that, make sure that your stator is good. Then the next thing you need is a new O-ring. Putting a little oil on the O-ring. Put the wires through. Now, uh, on this particular one, the wiring and the connector were burned up from being overheated in the past. And uh, so I've rewired this. Okay, there's the O-ring. All right, now. Going to smear some oil on this plug. And this is going through the hole. As you can see, that goes through the hole like that. Right now I'm up to the point where there's resistance from the O-ring, so I'm going to set it back down in here and get to a position where I can push on it a little. That is uh, not fully in there, so I'm going to have to find something to push that with. Maybe this. Okay, I've got a small brass rod here. I'm going to use it to uh, try to get that plastic plug seated in the cover. You have to be very gentle with that because the plastic edges will break off. I 
Get this in now. Yes, that's all the way through now. So I can bolt the stator into place. Okay, the original bolts were Phillips head. As you can see, that uh, head of that bolt is rusty and uh, it was difficult to remove and it's not really reusable. So we're replacing them with socket heads. And uh, my socket heads are a tiny bit longer. I'm going to put a lock washer under the head. Okay lock washer. Okay, now on these I'm going to put um, just a little bit of uh, Never Seize. the thread. That's going to require a five millimeter Allen wrench. Okay, being a uh, six millimeter bolt going into uh, aluminum casting, the maximum torque on that's going to be about uh, 10 newton meters. Setting my torque wrench right there, 10 newton meters. I'm just going to brace this against my hip and and there it is, it clicked. I don't want to mash the wires down against the workbench, so I'm using blocks of wood to hold it up. Double check all my bolts. Okay, there we are. The uh, lock washers are all crushed flat. That's a good sign that my bolts weren't too long. There it is. Bearings are in. 
the stator coil is in place, the uh, seals are in, there's one more thing left to do, and that is to put a snap ring on that stator coil. So I'm going to get into that snap ring groove and gently pull that up with a screwdriver to make sure that it's all the way up where it belongs. I believe it is. This is the original snap ring that was on there. I'm putting it back on. Looks to be in good condition still. All right, and there's one last piece to the puzzle, and that's a rubber boot to protect this. Wipe that all off. Okay, I tried to buy a new rubber boot for this and could not find one anywhere. So I'm reusing the original one, and what I do is I, uh, since this boot is actually not in good condition, it's got cracks in it and everything, so what I do is I uh, put some black RTV in there. Okay, since this uh, cover is not in real good condition. I'm putting some black RTV, or silicone sealant, high temperature silicone sealant in there, and then pushing this down over it. And that snaps into a little groove. As you can see, the silicone sealant is now oozing out. I've done this on a couple of other ones and it uh, holds up really well. Okay, wipe my fingers off. Wipe off the excess sealant. Okay, I'm going to let that dry, and uh, that is now ready to reassemble onto the motor. So, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll continue this project uh, a little bit later.